first thing I want to do is tell you about a beautiful adventure that took place last week. Uh, I went down to Tennessee. I visited a friend there who's a biologist working on becoming a state botanist there. And he took me around to catch and find as many species of fish as I possibly could. And I've been through Tennessee before, but I did really poorly in terms of catching fish. Uh, and I didn't record footage while I was there for an Avian J adventure, so I thought that I would show you all the images and recant it as I went along. So, let's start. The very first thing we caught, Scarlet Shiner. I ended up catching a better one of these, that's this. Uh, we also caught Rainbow Darter. If you've never seen a Rainbow Darter before, you might think they're pretty. I find them to be quite ugly. <laughs> I kind of hate Rainbow Darters because I guess I see them so often. They stay colorful all year long. These like red scales and everything, they stay colorful all year long. So they look beautiful to people. I kind of I kind of hate them because I see them so damn often. Um, Buffalo darter, this is just a, basically the same thing as the rainbow or orange throat darter, but it has this hump on top of it. It's a, very, it's a recent split. People tend to like that one as well. Uh, the first day we went to Bojangles. I don't know if you, any of you guys live in the south. And I think they're trying to bring Bojangles up. I think there's one in eastern Pennsylvania. So I may go at some point. But man, I've made fun of southern food a lot. But southern biscuits go hard. Southern biscuits are really good. A biscuit, egg, and cheese from Bojangles in the morning was perfect. Um, I got this Guardian Darter, which is a type of spot tail darter. There's a lot of those. Uh, rosy side dace, those are everywhere. I got a Western Creek Chub Sucker, which I have Eastern and Lake Creek Chub Sucker, so this added another species for me, and I was like kind of on the edge of its range there. Pretty. Yeah, I did I did hear they're trying to bring Bojangles to New Jersey. I am no longer against it. Uh, I got a long ear sunfish. This band fin darter was reasonably pretty. Got like the nice red along the side. It's not as colored up as they get, but basically the theme of this trip was beautiful darters. <laughs> Just as many beautiful fish as we could come across. Uh, the first night we went for a karst cave fish, which is a fish that normally lives in caves, but will come up through the spring sometime into these like shallow areas with mud. And unfortunately it was a bit too dry. And also I think the mud was trying to eat me. So I like tried to walk out onto this muddy area and the first step, it's like, okay, I'm this much into the mud, not a big deal. Second step, I'm like this much into the mud. And I'm like, okay, well surely it ends there. Third step, it goes up to like here and I'm like, okay, nope, we're good. We'll, 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 I'd rather have my life than catch this cave fish. So I decided to not catch the cave fish that night because it was so damn muddy. I still tried around for a while. There were like two logs and I sort of straddled them a little bit to see how far out I could reach to try and catch the fish. Didn't manage to catch the cave fish. Yes, I did not meet my demise in a Tennessee bog, which sucks because that is the that was like the fish I wanted the most out of the fish that I was targeting there. It's slightly unfortunate that I did not manage to get it, but it's okay. I'll get it in the future. One of my like bucket list fish things is I want to see all of the American cave fish. I believe there's seven or eight and those two, the spring cave fish and the karst cave fish are the only ones that you can get on the surface. Oh, and then swamp fish. The other ones are all like, I have to go into a cave. So that'll be an adventure. Yeah, I'll bring a submarine next time. Um, I got a speckled darter. This is the... This is like the archetype of the ones that are named after all the presidents. I don't know if I've, I've told you guys before about the presidential darters that at the Estoma, Jimmy Cartery and Obama and so forth and so forth. I may have caught one. We'll see later in the in the discussion. But this is like the type specimen. This is basically what got split and they named a bunch of them after presidents and such. Uh, another banfin darter, not particularly pretty. Firebelly darter, these guys are decently pretty. Bright eyes are decently pretty. Firebelly darter get a lot more colored up than this. I think I even caught a more colored up one later in the day. They're quite cool. Bright eye darter, this is a really pretty one. I really like this guy. Unfortunately, I had something slightly on the face of the tank here. This would have been a wonderful photo. It's also rare that you get like green as much so in darters. It's a less common color. Um, blue, I think, is the most uncommon color. Also caught a few different types of mad toms. Just cute little catfish guys, you know, that will stab you and poison you or envenomate you, I guess is the correct term. Plus the biggest mad tom I've ever seen. I've seen some big margin mad toms, but this brown mad tom was really big. 
Here's a more colored up fire belly darter. This is basically more so what they look like. I mean, it's not nearly as pretty as they get. The the theme that I noticed is all of the snub nose darters, the guys who have like a ending nose, didn't cooperate super well in the photo tank. I mean, his fins are up, but it's not like amazing. Everything's not out. They like to sit on the bottom, basically, which makes sense. I got a dusky darter, which is a common one, but it's quite cool. I just, I really love this genus of Persina. They don't get particularly pretty, but I just love Persina, and they're always so cooperative in the tanks. A few other things, nothing particularly pretty. I started le learning about freshwater mussels, so I got a few of those, and I may be doing a video on freshwater mussels soon, so that's cool. Uh, small scale darter. It's a pretty one. It's kind of on the fat side. I love this like tail coloration with the red and the yellow and then the blue edge. It's just there's a lot of depth to color in the tail and then how evenly spaced out the singular scales. Like how does this evolve? This is so crazy to me. Just a bunch of brown scales in a row and then there's one scale that's red. Uh, and then they've got this like nice, I don't know, coloration on the cheek. They're very cool. I like I like the small scale darter a lot. Red line darter. Everyone finds those really pretty. This is not a great picture. I took greater pictures later, but they're they're just very pretty in general. Um, Blotch Chub, that's a cool one. One of the Aram Ice Stacks, just a cool fish in general. Uh, oh, Warioto Darter. So this was my first presidential darter. This is Ethestomia Gore after Al Gore, who was a presidential candidate, but didn't end up being a, a president. And we fished for like 60 minutes looking for this fish you know, dip netted around. And then we gave up and we're walking back to the parking lot. And I was sort of dragging my net through the water, like right as we went up onto the sand my last time. And I managed to pick this guy up. It was literally the last fish that we caught at the site. And at the next site, we caught my favorite crayfish I've ever seen, the hillbilly hairy crayfish. That's actually what it's called. Hillbilly hairy crayfish. And it's got these hairs on all the claws which is super odd. I picked it out of the water and Jared was like, oh yeah, the hillbilly hairy crayfish. How could anybody forget that? <laughs> yeah, I know it literally is hairy. Apparently there's multiple species of like hairy crayfish, probably a sensory thing. But this specific guy you'll see is very range restricted to a small area in Tennessee. I got tons of more crayfish while I was there. Sculpins, my first southern red belly dace. Pretty cool. Uh, they would be crayfish, probably. I caught a lot of crayfish, Carnelius. Um, Diamondback Spittlebug is cool. That was a random thing that was on the photo tank. Blenny Darter, this is one I liked, and then a prettier red line. Blenny Darters are cool. It looks like a Blenny, but it's a Darter. It's just the coloration. It's pretty cool. And then this is just a prettier... Oh, okay. This is just a prettier red line Darter. Again, I didn't take great pictures of red line Darters because I've caught a ton of them before. So I didn't, I didn't take them... I didn't even put any in the tank, I don't think. Then I got a bunch of plants because Jared knows plants very well, and he pointed at a cliff, and he went, there's a bunch of rare plants on that cliff. And I said, sir, yes, sir. And I went over to the cliff, and I took as many pictures as I could. Um, on the way to this, by the way, we ran into a tractor migration. I don't think I've ever been in a place that is so southern that I ran into... There were 10 tractors in a row on this small like farm road going... I don't know, maybe 10, 15 miles per hour, all in a line. But there was like enough space for a car in between each one, barely. So we would drive around one, get in front of the next, drive around one, get in front of the next, drive around one. And we had to do that like 10 times. I think the tractors were migrating to their homeland or it was some sort of ritual. I don't really know what was going on or why that would happen. Tractor conga? Yeah, maybe it was a celebration. I don't know. There's a lot of possibilities. All right, this is the day where I started to really look at muscles, but we'll get into that. Uh, fantail darters, everyone knows those. Copper cheek. Copper cheek is basically just a small scale darter, but in a different area. So the same idea with coloration on the tail is a little bit different, and then more red on the cheek. And then you've got these red spots that seem to sometimes come in pairs. I don't know if that's a consistent thing, but they're also quite pretty. Yes, I do love muddles. I do love muscles. Here's my, here's my muscle expenditure. As Jared pointed me out, a bunch of muscles. Uh, some of these are quite rare. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Oh yeah, this guy, purple cat's paw. This is the federally endangered one. It has like, yeah, it has. Four, it's federally endangered, and it has three observations on iNaturalist. One of them is Jared, and one of them is me of the same one. So prior to Jared and I each taking a photo of one, there had never been an observation, or there had been one observation of purple cat's paw on iNaturalist. 
Uh, there's a lot of really cool ones. There's Duck River Garter Snapper in here as well. It's probably towards the top. That's a muscle that like holds on to darters and lays its eggs in their gills. So the darters bring the muscle eggs up. Oh, oh, here you go. Upstream a bit or downstream and just spread them. And that's endemic to just the specific river that we were in. Very cool. That's how most freshwater mussels reproduce. Uh, we got a golden darter. This guy is very tiny. I, you can't really tell scale from the photo, but he's like this big, like one of the tiniest darters I've ever caught. And apparently that's pretty close to their max size. Duck darter, green side darter, never surprise, never fail to surprise me with how massive they get. These darters are just freaking big, dude. The darter takes up my whole hand, especially compared to the last darter, which is this big. A darter that covers my whole hand is crazy. Green side darters always shock me with how gigantic they get. More copper cheeks. Got a mountain mad tom, which is cool. Got a mosquito fish. Uh, oh, we we stopped at this this parking lot where we were at uh, a national forest, okay? And we stopped at the parking lot and we're gonna go to the river. No, iNaturalist covers the whole world, Pluto. You can look at anything from any area. It doesn't just have to be the USA. There's probably tons of observations in the UK. Just, I'll take a brief little aside, but here, if I go to explore, we go to the map, there's observations literally across the whole world. The only places missing observations are like the center deserts of Africa and China. But yeah, if you want to go to the UK, you can see that if I just highlight the UK here, there are 4.2 million observations of almost 20,000 different species in the UK. Yes, there's plenty to look at and you can use it as well and find cool stuff. Uh, speckled darter again. Oh wait, so anyway, so we stop at this this river and it, right in front of the parking lot, the opposite direction of the river, there's like this big down muddy slide thing into sort of like a cave. It's not a cave because it doesn't go like deeper into the rock, but it's a big rock overhang and you can go under it. And I was like, oh wow, that looks pretty cool. And Jared was like, well, there could be salamanders in there if you want to look. And I said, sure. And I got probably the best photo I will ever take of a cave salamander sitting in this little crevice. He is so adorable and beautiful. I don't, this was like a one take. I didn't sit there for a while trying to get a great photo. I literally, I pointed my camera, I took a picture and then I walked out and it came out amazingly. Yeah, he's a really pretty cave salamander. So that was really cool that I just went down in this little mud pit. I got my shoe covered in mud. I have a photo of that. What camera do you use? Primarily, I have a I have a bird camera for zoom, but primarily I use an Olympus TG6, I believe. Yeah, TG6. It's very tough and it's an underwater. Works very well for what I do. I got an Alabama Shiner, which is a cool Alabama only Cipronella. Oh yeah, that's right. We went through we went through Alabama as well. So we sort of like started in Tennessee and then worked our way down through Alabama and then back up. Got a black banded darter, which is another nice Persina. Uh, Western Blacktail Shiner, some of the most popular ones in the West. Warrior Darter, this one's quite cool. I just, I, he's not as pretty as they get, but he's got some cool colors, definitely. I love the orange on the edges of the fins. Uh, Alabama Hogsucker, this completed the genus for me. I got an Alabama Hogsucker, he's got such a giant eye. So this is the genus Hypentelium. Uh, there are three species in the genus Hypentelium which is the Northern Hogsucker, the Alabama Hogsucker, and the Roanoke Hogsucker, and I've now observed all three of them. So, I've completed the genus. If you are doing Pokemon, it's like I've completed the evolution, I've completed the region, whatever you want to call it. Um, Tuscaloosa Darter, I don't think I took very good pictures of Tuscaloosa Darter, but another, I think, Greenbreast type Darter. I got a Northern Slimy Salamander in a cave thing, but he's, you know, curled up in a ball. I uh, got a zigzag salamander under a log. It's quite cool. And then I got a green salamander, but he was so far back in the crevice and my camera is not made for this. But if you look, you can see his eye and then his body right here. So I did find a cool salamander and this is like one of the more rare ones. This is the one we were looking for, but he was like so deep in this crevice that it was really hard to get him in focus. Uh, Cause the only, the only downside, this is an amazing camera but it doesn't have manual focus. So the camera just focuses on, like, you know, it unblurs whatever it thinks is best. And when you're pointing it at like a rock face, it can do a bad, bad job of that, basically. Got some striped tail darters, a black, black 
fin darter flame chub is cool oh i got jump scared by um woodcocks there's a bird called a woodcock and it, it ju was just sitting on this pile of leaves that was covering the stream because the stream's covered in leaves right now because it's fall and i never saw it it was like perfectly camouflaged in until i got within like two feet of it and then it went and flew away and it jump scared me it scared the crap out of me and then like 10 minutes later i'm going the opposite direction down the same stream and then i get jump scared by a different woodcock <laughs> So I got double jump scared by two different woodcocks at the same stream. I swear they were invisible. I never even saw, like, I, I, I pan the stream pretty carefully when I'm looking, and I never once saw one. That's pretty funny. Also saw some domestic mallards, which is cool, at this one little area. Two domestic ones. Yeah, they knew what they were doing. Uh, black side snub nose. Here's a vermilion darter. This guy is uh, federally endangered, as you can see, federally endangered. And the only stream which he exists in is one small urban stream in Birmingham, Alabama, in a large city in Alabama. You know how we caught this one? We went to a gas station. <laughs> we caught this fish at a gas station. I went to a gas station parking lot, climbed down into a little urban stream, and caught a federally endangered, beautiful snub nose darter. Very cool. There was another darter that we were also targeting in there that I believe was also federally endangered. So we had the, the capability of catching two extremely protected darters in one gas station parking lot, essentially. Uh, we moved on. Big water oak, though people seem to disagree with me. This is cool. This is this town called Coldwater. Oh, look, Jared made an appearance. <laughs> Jared is slightly in the photo. Let's go, Jared. <laughs> um, I took a picture of the oak. This was this like tiny town called Coldwater. And as we're in this like tiny stream, okay, doing, you know, trying to catch fish in this stream, we see someone pull by in a car and take a video or a picture of us like out their window. And we have two different theories. My theory is like, oh, they're like, oh, there's people in the local stream. That's cool. I'll take a, I'll take a photo of that. Uh, Jared's theory is they've called the police and the police are coming for us. And Jared is very worried that the police are going to come and arrest us. And I was like, well, what are they going to arrest us for? It's a public stream. And he looks at me and he goes, we're in Alabama. And I went, fair enough. So we were slightly worried about that. So we got all the fish that we needed and got out as fast as we could. Got a pygmy sculpin, which is one of the most range restricted fish in the world. It's restricted to just like the upper parts of this tiny stream. And it's this tiny sculpin with a giant eye. Very cute. I got a bronze darter, though I took a better picture of one later in the day. One of the more pretty Persina, as far as that goes. Small town in Alabama is very odd. They definitely called the police. Well, see, that's the thing. I didn't say anything to Jared, but multiple police drove over the bridge after, like, over the water, and none of them stopped at the place. So unless they had really bad directions, I don't know. Uh, right as our, we were on our way out, though, we did catch a brook lamprey, and he sucked onto my hand presumably to steal my blood, but he didn't have enough time to do so. But well, this is a very cool fish. So, very, very cool. Least brook lamprey. It was the only species I caught while I was there, but what's that shell? Uh, some sort of snail. So there was a snail in this stream called the Coldwater Pebble Snail, which was a snail that is endemic, only lives in this one stream. And so we took pictures of the snails that we saw just in case it happened to be that one, but it was not that one. Southern two line salamander, an adult, which is pretty cool. More plants, more sculpins. Tricolor shiner, I caught a really pretty one of those in Georgia. It's in a video. Uh, holiday darter, this might be my favorite fish from the trip. It's just so perfect, the green and red. And I got a pretty good photo of it as well. I'm definitely gonna post this on Twitter when it's like around Christmas, Hanukkah time and happy holidays from the holiday darter. Although there's a Christmas darter, a Halloween darter and a Hanukkah darter, but this guy covers all the bases. This is the holiday darter. Uh, the green breasts were quite pretty as well. I like these guys, they've got, I just, I love the layering of color in the fins that are pretty nice. Uh, I got a shadow bass, more green breast. Rainbow Shiner. Oh, here's a better picture of a Northern Slimy Salamander, because this one was on the ground, not in a cave. And actually, this one's out of focus, too. Uh, then we found ourselves in this giant river, okay? So we're going to this little stream, and this guy comes along, and he, like, stops on the bridge as we're entering the stream, and he goes, who are, you know, where are you, are you guys local? And we said, well, no, not really. 
And he goes, well, you can't be in there, whatever. And he like watched us come out of the stream, sat next to our car, waited for us to get in the car and drive away before he left. So he was very protective of whatever was in that stream. Um, it was not private property. We're pretty sure that it was not. We looked at like the public records and everything. So we don't know if that was like his favorite fishing spot or something. And that's why he was protective of it. But anyways, we go to this big river and we have to go on this crazy adventure to get to the good part in the river because this river is fairly deep. And the only part where we can find fish are this, this ripple, the shallow area where the water's flowing super fast. But it's like a quarter of a mile down the river and there's no good path there. So we wander through the forest for a quarter of a mile to hop down onto this ripple. And Jared told me after, by the way, that apparently we were in alligator territory. Not that they would have been active with how cold it is, but apparently we were far enough south in Alabama that there could have been alligators in this river. And uh, we caught some pretty cool ones. We caught my favorite, the much better bronze darter. I'm very happy with this guy. He's just extremely pretty. And it, the picture came out really well as well. So there were a lot of these persina, which are the darters that are adapted for fast water. Uh, and I, my like last, my last attempt that I did before so the, like the last thing that I tried to do was the riffle came over this like really fast bit over some boulders and I was like okay it is nearly impossible to stand in this water because it's flowing so fast and it's nearly impossible for me to drag the net in this water but I'm gonna put everything I've got you know it's the last sight of the day probably one of the last sights of the trip I'm gonna put my full strength into it and so I went through the riffle and just pulled as hard as I could not even sure if the net would hold up and I caught multiple of these muscadine darters, which are a Parsina darter that's just really adapted for crazy fast water. You can see how long they are for that exact reason. Uh, we caught a few more fish at a few other spots. Got Cumberland Snubnose, another Northern Hogsucker. Bedrock Shiner, which is quite cool. This is another Natropus, like a really rare Natropus that I got. Very pretty. Looks like some of the ones in New Jersey, but yeah, you can see they're pretty damn range restricted. I think I uploaded, yeah, I uploaded two photos and Jared uploaded two. So that makes up almost half of the photos that exist of the Bedrock Shiner, which is funny. Um, some more darters, caught a Warmouth. Oh yeah, we go to the very last spot. So we're like, it's, I don't know, a few hours before my flight. And we're, we want one more species because so far I have caught 68 new species. And we're like, how cool would it be if I could end on 69 new species for this trip? So we're like, we have to find one more fish to get, but we're already pretty close to the airport. I was like, I looked at iNaturalist and I was trying to find a fish nearby. And the closest thing was a stone darter. And uh, unfortunately, that seemed like the stone darter was in the edge of this gigantic lake. And I was like, well, that seems unlikely. Darters like some sort of flow. So I was like, it's probably just like a one-off where the darter got lost in the lake and someone happened to find it. I was betting that the darter would not be possible, but I was like, well, we might as well try. Let's try to get me my 69th species for the trip. And uh, turns out they're extremely common in that lake. And we caught a bunch of these stone darters with this beautiful like gold scaling on the cheek. They're very pretty for being, you know, so simple. Uh, and yeah, there's a nice, I got a prettier flame chub and a prettier cherry darter that, that morning at this one random stream. Okay, can I stop clicking things I don't mean to? Prettier flame chub and a prettier, oh my god, cherry darter. And uh, that is pretty much it. I believe that is about it for this trip. There were a lot of things that happened and a lot of things to mention. So yes, it was a great trip. It was nice to spend time with Jared and to learn all of the amazing things he has to share and you can't complain about five day trip in tennessee and finding yes yeah, so many not only like so many new species to me but so many rare fish Whoa.